Uh, so what about what about stuff like stimuluses for the economy? Um, what do you think? That's that about the brings? only thing me and Occupy agree on. I do not agree on stimuluses at all. I believe in capitalism as a harsh, cruel mistress, and if your business's house isn't in order, the uh, economy should tear it to ruin, because that's what it will do. And if we had let that happen, we would have had banks fail in the United States, and insurance payments would have been paid out, but would have had reallegation, and everything would have gone on, and we wouldn't be having this oh dear god high floor closure rates and everything else that are dragging house prices down they would have there basically would have been a 12 to 18 month period of readjustment it would have been a depression more along the lines of what we had in the 1980s as opposed to what we're having now what we're having now is more in line with the magnitude and order of the Great Depression. You know, we did the exact opposite thing we did in the Great Depression, created the exact opposite problem, which had the that, same bubbly result. You've heard that, uh, you know, if we count, like, unemployment the same way we did during the Great Depression, it's actually bad, that, or worse. Yeah. It's yeah. not good. It, yeah. it, it's... Uh, officially, we're at 8.5. Unofficially, just taking into account the people we know disappeared, we're at 11. In all reality, we're probably at about 16 plus. We're we're not doing good on that, and we can we can play higgledy jiggledy with all the numbers we want. You know, the same thing with the stocks pissed me the hell off when we did that back in. Uh, 08, 09. We, we basically changed the rules of all the markets to prevent companies from being delisted. What, what most people don't realize about our markets is once things fall below price X, for the traditional exchange it's a dollar. Once the stock falls below a dollar, goes away. The New York Stock Exchange has never been worth nothing. But what happened in 1929 was all the stocks fell below the, the we listed at price X thing. So the reported number was nothing. That actually happened this time. We, we, we had a complete collapse. But we changed the rules so that things that wouldn't report kept reporting. So, yeah. It's just, I, 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 I don't like the stimulus. I don't like tricking the numbers. Let's be honest about what we have to deal with. Oh, what? what? Because then it's just, I, I don't know. What about you? Uh, I, yeah, I, as far as, you know, the way that it's being done, I actually, you know, I, so I watched a bit of, uh, you know, Zeitgeist Moving Forward and about that society, and I thought a lot of parts of it were interesting, and that would you know, and that's, so the way that Obama is doing it now, which is not anything like that, um, is, won't work. Uh, you know, first of all, you know, my sister said something about, like, uh, for the stimulus to, to work, it would need to be orders of magnitude bigger, which I believe is true from what I know of, you know, how that kind of economics work. Well, but the problem with that is, uh, if you go orders of magnitude bigger like that, basically you make everybody poor because the currency's value collapses, and at the end of the day, you still got to put the financial house in order, which means, you know, as long as we're doing definite spending on t and then doing stimulus on top of it, 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 it can't. It, it's basically, okay, we're going to spend... $2 trillion to cover our $2 trillion deficit, and now we're $2.4 trillion short because the money's worth less. So now we're going to spend and so on and so forth, you know? And so that, that happens with that kind of economic. And so I don't really agree with it. And I much prefer, you know, a free market. So I, I would agree with you that, yeah, we should be having a free market. We should get the government out of these things. We should not be giving stimuluses. Uh, all of them, yeah. You know, it, it's... I guess, that, you know, you think what the government should, as far as companies take care of, is that, you know, say, you know,
know, PG&E, which has, you know, Pacific Gas and Electric uh, over where Interesting I company to pick. <laughs> right. Well, okay, so say that they went out of business and, you know, obviously the people still need their gasoline and electricity. Somebody, so, if they went out of business, what would happen would be PG&E would file bankruptcy and someone else or someone else is would come in and buy the ruins of PG&E. Right. And so I believe that that should happen, but if it takes maybe a week between that, the government should allow that week to happen and just give just enough for it to keep running until it's bought. Just to, so people have water for a week. Or well, so yeah, but, well you know, we, we already have a precedent for that. GM's bankruptcy. GM went bankrupt. All the GM cars didn't suddenly disappear. All the GM dealerships didn't close while that was going on. It was like, no, GM's still here, it's just bankrupt. It's, it's figuring out how to make things work. Yeah. And that would, like, if a utility went bankrupt, that's what would happen too. You know? Yeah. Uh, and that's what should... Uh, you know, and honestly, the the example of why the stimulus is wrong, the, the car one is a perfect example, because look at what happened to the two companies that took the stimulus, and look at to the, what happened to the one that said, hell no, I'm not touching that stimulus, I'm going to figure out how to get my own house in order. I mean, Ford's doing great right now. I still have reservations about ever driving a Ford, <laughs> because I remember what Fords used to be, but, <laughs> you know, they're not doing bad. That's, GM, on the other hand, is not really even GM anymore. They're, they're GM in name. It did, was Ford the one that didn't take the stimulus? Ford is the one that said, hell no, I'm not taking that thing. <laughs> they were there to ask, but when they looked at the terms, they said, we're not that bad off. We can get our own house in order. Goodbye. <laughs> that was, yeah. That yeah, was it, smart it, of them. It just doesn't encourage the same kind of comp uh, competition and that a free market does having all this stimulus. Well, and see, yeah. honestly, here, here's where people lose that. I, I don't know about your opinions on that, but people go, oh, yeah, you capitalists, so if I can't afford my food, I should just be left to die in the street. Okay. Anybody studied economics, there is capitalism, there's monopolies, there's oligopolies, which is what government sponsorship tends to create. And there's uh, other things uh, which, you know, this is in, taught in capitalistic, you know, economics classrooms. There are certain things that will never make sense to do capitalistically. Libraries, social programs, aid, so on and so forth. What you say in a capitalistic society is you let capitalism do its job. When the companies fail, and the banks fail, and the bubbles pop, you don't bail them out. You let the businesses that aren't doing their jobs fail and be thrown to the wolves of the capitalistic economy. The people who are not able to stand on their feet as a result, you help. You invest in the individuals, you figure out a way to fold them into the new society, and help them and so forth. If I as a company can, let's take, let's take something everybody needs, food. You know, most food is grown by a corporation of some type, a farm co-op or, or something. It's very little food is grown by an individual. A lot of food's actually grown outside the U.S., but for some reason we're the biggest producer of rice. But we let all our sugar go overseas. That's not, anyways, uh, but we grow food. We're really the biggest producer of rice. Yeah, we really are one of the global producers of rice. It's one of those weird things. It's like, really? <laughs> what? Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah. I'm sure not the only one that would think that would be, you know, China or something. Uh, no, yeah, and ironically, that's one of the places we're exporting a lot. It's like, it's like, it's, like, it's more a global, it's more a global market than most people are aware. It's hysterical. But anyways, let, let, I, I, I knew that we were a huge producer of corn. Yeah, we're also one of the biggest producers of rice. It's, it's funny. It's just it's weird. <laughs> Anyways, 
let's say between the cost of making the rice, the cost of the seeds, the cost of the land, the cost of the water, because it doesn't all come from the rain. You need irrigation equipment, you need farm equipment. You know, it, it, it takes resources to get something done. And let's say the cheapest you can possibly do it, 80% of the people can afford it, but 20% of the people don't have that much. That is where you send stimulus and subsidy dollars to cover the difference between the bare minimum. This is as cheap as the capitalistic market can do it because these are the costs. We can't do it less than this. It's just, that's the reality. These percentage of our population need this thing, but there's no way in hell they can get there. So we institute a program like food stamps and welfare and say, we're going to cover this difference for you. In the meantime, we're also going to invest in figuring out a way to get you to cover the difference on your own. So this isn't needed anymore. How long do you think that food stamps should last until, or how long do you think that this government aid should last to that individual until it expires? I don't think there is a, uh, that, see, uh, that, that right there has to do with making a false assumption. You're making the assumption that that answer is the same for everybody. This is one of the reasons I don't like the fact that these are federal programs. You have a central authority trying to make an answer apply to everybody. In, in some areas, that's three weeks. In some areas, that's a year. In, in other areas, 18 months to 36 months, time to complete a full re-education program to have new employable skills is necessary. Now, because the reality is you can retrain somebody who really wants to get retrained in 18 to 36 months to be employable in a new industry and learn new skills and new education. You can do that. But it, it does take a minimum amount of time to do that. If the area has fallen apart that much and the jobs that everybody was doing no longer exist and they all need to be retrained, 36 months is probably a good a good place called start because you do the 18 month retrain and then the 18 months of getting on their feet. So in that particular case, 36 makes sense. Nine times out of 10 though, 36 months is way too damn long. But in that unique case, 36 months is necessary. So, you know, I mean, we, we, we scoff at the 99 weeks thing. This is one of the things I get mad at the Republican debates. I'm like, there are places where 99 weeks of unemployment compensation is actually necessary. Most places, that's criminal negligence. And the real problem with some of our social programs is it's real easy to get disqualified from them by pursuing education, which I think is the stupidest thing we've ever done. I'm like, so you're pursuing education so you can ultimately get off the social program, and as a result, you're going to lose access to the social program. Who the hell made that rule up? What about you? How long do you think it should last? Well, um, so I think the way my view is that, um, while, like, these programs last, I think that while people, they think that the government should, there should be a lot of, uh, government supporting education. So when, as long as the people are getting an education, uh, and specifically, you know, they're they're working in those classes. They're they're learning some new skill that the government should give them aid. But if they're not getting an education, it should be very short to none um, uh, of of the aid the government gives. And I'm actually fine with tying it to your grade, as yeah. long as as long as there's an appeal process, because everybody inevitably is going to get a bad grade grade that could just. You know, in the same way, I, 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 I mean, colleges officially try and kick you out if you ever fall below uh, X GPA. But they, all of them, they say, okay, you're going to get kicked out, but you, because you got an F. Okay, we're going to give you a semester to put it back in order. <laughs> you know, that's... <laughs> and, so that, and so I think that, I personally think that it should be tied strongly to education. They're saying, okay, here's some help for you to get food during this time you have to go to this, you have to go to a college, you know, we'll help you pay for this community college, and you have to actually try it to get a new skill so that you may help yourself, and, you know, as long as you're doing that, we're good, 
and then when you leave and you want to, you know, get a new skill, and you want to actually work and maybe make more money than we're giving you because we're giving you the bare minimum you need to live. Yeah. Uh, uh, then once you do that, then we'll just let you off the leash. But I think it should be tied strongly to education. Now, uh, taking that's the way it used to work. And I'm going to tell you why it doesn't work that way anymore and why we largely made education a means for disqualification and so on. What was happening, and I hate to turn this into a 99 versus 1% thing because this is basically people who were abusing the system and this was not the rule of thumb, but there were people who were more than capable of taking care of themselves but took advantage of the fact that they were broke college kids and went and applied for every aid under the sun and basically leached the system because they you know college kids generally don't have a lot of income so that's why they started making that largely grounds for disqualification in a lot of places because of those freeloaders who abused the system do you think steps should be put in to try and prevent those freeloaders or acknowledge that that's just something that's going to happen and since it's being treated as an entitlement program, 100% are entitled? I mean, how do you draw the thing? Because, I mean, one of the things we do do in this country is we try and shove kids under mom and dad for the first half of their 20s because we assume mom and dad are going to help them. And there, there's a lot of people who get kicked out on the street at 17 or 18. Mom and Dad don't want nothing to do with them, you know. So, um, I think that a lot of that is fixed if we, you know, make the aid itself bare minimum for one. Uh, at least, if we're having a free capitalist market, yeah, make it bare minimum what they need to pay for food and stuff. And also, try to validate in some way, now the government is horrible at this, but try to validate in some way how much they're making, you know, so that if they were telling the truth for whatever they're making, then yes, they get aid, and, and then a lot of people will lie, and the government won't catch like 80% of those lies, but I don't think that there's anything else you could do from that, like hope that, you know, the government could have a better system at actually looking at these, but not really, because I don't really want the government to be looking at everyone's life, finding out how much they're making. I think that, you know... Well, no, and those programs do random audits, and the penalties if you get caught are substantial. They're like up to $200,000, and this is debt you can't ever get rid of. This is debt the government will follow you around till the day you die and take it. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it, the, the amount of money from taxes that we spend on aid is very small um, uh, compared, you know, how much we're spending in a lot of the uh, occupying overseas, stuff like that. A lot of things that we could probably make more efficient. So I think that, yes, people will leech on it. Uh, they, the only way that we could stop that reasonably is to give some amount of risk for doing that and don't make it desirable make it rather I'm doing well it. And, and that's the thing you're hitting at right there don't make it desirable I mean the reality is uh, where that abuse comes from is when you make the leech the leech's standard of living too good yeah yeah, yeah. somebody needs um, they need food they need yeah. shelter they need uh, you know, access to, I would argue in the United States because of the way we function, access to electricity, utility, yeah. plumbing, and internet. It doesn't have to be high speed internet. I agree with all of them. Yeah, I mean, it's like a bare minimum of internet. You have access. It may take you 30 minutes to load some stuff. Uh, it's like. There is, there is cheap internet. There's companies that are still selling, you know, modems. Uh, with, you know, what is it, like 56K mm. speed internet, which, you know, and surprisingly... I, I, 
I would be more in favor rather than putting them on dial-up because it isn't that reliable and the infrastructure on which dial-up was built on in the United States is kind of falling apart at this point. I mean, for crying out loud, we're giving, we have a welfare cell phone system. This might surprise a lot of y'all, but we have a program in the United States and many, uh, pretty much uh, nationwide, where yeah. if you're on welfare, you get a free cell phone. And the yeah. reason for that is it's like, wait a minute, I can't afford a cell phone. That's not what that's about. 20 years ago, we had pay phones in every corner. Now we don't. So the reality is, if you don't give them a cell phone, they don't have access to 911, and they can't call the number to even comply with their thing and so forth. I happen to agree with that program, but it should be an absolute bare minimum. You know, this is an emergency line with no minutes. This is just so you have a phone for an employer to call you and sought and, and so forth. Uh, the same thing with sign. Put them on a high-speed thing. Scale it back. Dial it down. <laughs> Put them on the broadband infrastructure, but dial it down to the absolute minimum speed. You know, that's. And so, what? Well, my point with the, the with the slow internet. So, uh, you know, a while ago I was on the Ubuntu forums and they were talking about, you know, internet camping. Basically, people would dial back their speed using some program to make their internet really slow, and uh, just try to use the computer for a while uh, just you know seeing you know what you could do for that and just you know you would obviously have to use uh, you know it would help to use a text based browser it would help to use that simply because you, it was as slow as it was back then and as far as things like Wikipedia and stuff like that they actually weren't that bad to look so mm -mm. well they're largely text anyways huh? they're largely text anyways which, you know, yeah, which is, you know, even all the way back then, you s it's really not that bad. You know, me having done that with that kind of internet, it's, you know, it's, it's not, it was not really that bad. I mean, you're not going to be able to play a game on it, but you're going to well, be able to. Well, but see, that, that right there gets to the thing. It, it, it's, that's a luxury, you right. know, you're spend. Gonna, you're able to do a school report. You will be able to do a school report. You will be able to apply for a job. Well, and I don't know any school in the United States. If there is one, let me know. But, I mean, even the worst colleges, the worst junior colleges, the worst high schools have a computer lab. They may not be the best computers. They, you, they may, you may have ten people shooing one, sharing one and having to get in a queue in a line, but they're there. You know, schedule your time accordingly, get your, and, I mean, that's incentive to, you know, I want my own computer someday. You yeah. know, that's...